my name is Maria Alvarez. I'm a teaching artist at the Clay Studio and for today's video, Clay at Home, I'm going to show you guys how to use soft slabs to make a tray or a plate. Okay, so the materials that we're going to be using today are clay to make the trays. I'm going to put these on the side. We're also going to need a plate or a tray if you're making either or. Um, pretty much anything that you can lay clay onto it could be a Pyrex uh, container, it could be um, a basket. As long as you can lay it over the shape, it's going to end up drying into that shape. You're also going to need a um, rolling pin if you have it handy. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to stretch out clay without it. You're going to need a bucket of water. Okay. We are going to use today a skewer for cutting clay and for later drying on clay. You can also use a needle. You can use a toothpick, uh, a knife. You're going to need um, some form of string to cut clay with, a sponge. We are also going to need some ribs and I have a few pieces that I cut out of containers, tomato containers or strawberry containers. Those are pretty great plastic. We are going to use newspaper and I always save these promotional little newspapers that they uh, drop off in front of our doors. They're great for that. Um, you need to lay the, the clay over it in between the before in between the plate because um, when clay dries and it's it will adhere to the surface and then as it shrinks, it's going to end up cracking. So always make sure that you cover anything you're using. Uh, with newspaper. We are also later when we move on to the decoration we're going to need a few brushes and you're going to need um, speedball underglaze. If you don't have access to underglazes just take notes for that section and you can later apply those techniques when you uh, get back to the studio. As long as you took your register for the spring term you'll be able to fire the work that you're going to make uh, that you're going to be watching at this demonstration and um, and later you'll be able to underglaze it or glaze it or use any other decorating materials. Okay, so now we have our clay and I'm going to go ahead and use my string to cut my clay with and I'm going to cut a little bit of a thick slab because I want to use it, I want my slab to be big enough to fit into my plate. So I'm going to go ahead, maybe like two fingers thick, use the wire cutters or string, whatever you have available to cut clay with. And since I am using my recycled clay from home, I use two different kinds of white stoneware. So that's why you're seeing the marbling. You're not going to have this uh, when you have, when you buy, when you're using your purchased clay. Um, and it also doesn't look, after it's fired, it won't look that way. And I'm going to use my rolling pin. And if you don't have a rolling pin, I'm going to show you how to stretch clay without a rolling pin. And you want to do a couple of rolls and flip the clay. Do a few more. Turn the clay again. The other thing you want to make sure is that you have fabric covering your table. Um, or your countertop if you decide to do this in the kitchen um, because clay especially when you're pressing down with a rolling pin um, clay is going to stick really hard to any surfaces that's not covered in fabric I choose an old sheet fabric to cover my table with because the pattern on the on the weaving is a lot smaller and it won't show too much on my clay bag. But you can use pretty much any kind of fabric, upholstery, canvas, anything you have lying around, um, it will work. And anything you pretty much can throw into the washer later. So you want to make your slab 
about a quarter inch thick and if you don't have a rolling pin you can stretch the clay by throwing it in a diagonal towards yourself. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over, pull it and towards do this movement. There we go. So then what we're going to do, and I'm going to use my rolling pin to make this a little bit thinner only because I want to show you two different kinds of demonstrations. And what I tell my students is that when they, if they don't have a ruler, quarter inch thickness is about almost the size of your pinky, maybe a little bit thinner than that. So that's a good guide when you're making um, a slab plate. Great. And then now what we're going to do is that we're going to grab our plate or our tray, whatever you're using, and you're going to place your tray facing down and then you're going to trace it and then you're going to cut it. And if you're making a tray, it's the same thing. You're going to place your rectangular tray down and then you're going to trace it and cut it with your skewer. Pointy part facing down. Okay. And then I'm going to have to perhaps wedge this clay to make a plate. After you stretch your whole slab, you want to go ahead and use your rib to smooth out your slab. And if you find, and if you do recycle your clay at home, because you know right now clay is hard to come by, so you want to make sure that you use um, up to the last crumb of clay, um, and you um, don't wedge it properly or don't know how to wedge, uh, you might find some air pockets on your clay. And if you do, what you want to do is use your skewer to pop them out. And I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to put this lap really close to the camera so you guys can see what I talk about when I am talking about a, uh, an air pocket. And I don't know if you guys can see, I'm going to circle it. Can you guys see? that little pocket, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and pop it like that. And if you find another one, and I'm going to show you right here is another pocket, you just pop it. As long as you pop the air out, you'll be fine. And then you go ahead and smooth out your slab one more time with the rib. And if you don't see any more tiny little air bubbles, then you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my rib again. I'm going to smooth this out. And you want to make sure that you smooth on both sides of the of the slab. And then I'm going to grab, always grab the slab, especially if they're this big with two hands like this, so you prevent it from stretching it. Make sure that your fabric is stretched out so you don't transfer the wrinkles onto your slab like I just did. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my plastic plate that I borrowed from Claymobile for my outreach program. And I'm going to place it down. And what I'm going to do is stretch, stretch out, I mean trace the plate with my skewer, hand down to hold your plate. Make sure that when you're cutting that you're feeling the table. That means you went deep enough. Flip over your plate. Crumble up all your clay so you can use it again for later. And I'm going to separate 
this from here. And then I'm going to use newspaper and I'm going to use another card for my styrofoam tray. Okay, lay it down, place your plate, your slab down, and what you're going to do now is make sure that it's centered to so keep moving your newspaper so you can see where the edge of your plate is. And once it's completely in the center, then you're going to go ahead and push the slab down. Okay, and with your fingers, finish smoothing and taking all the wrinkles from the fabric out. You also want to make sure that you smooth all your edges by going towards the center like this. You want to do your rim as well. And right now we are going to focus on the top of our plate and we're going to let the plate um, get a little bit leather hard and then we're going to flip it over and we're also going to smooth the bottom. And then we'll also talk about the option of adding a rim, a coiled rim, or leaving it that way. Good. And I'm going to, while this dries a little bit, I'm going to grab my tray slab and I'm going to do the same thing. And then you're going to push down the slab so it takes the shape of your styrofoam tray. And you can do this with any kind of tray. I've taught this project with other previous trays. I had a student one time buy, bring a huge platter she had purchased in Portugal. And then she made her own version, which was amazing. I was so proud of her. And that's good. So now we are going to let this stiffen up a little bit and then we are going to talk about decorations. So now that I left my plate sit for a few more hours, it's completely leather hard and it's stiff. And this is the great moment where now we can um, move to decorating. And I'm going to show you guys a few tricks. Um, we're going to go and add, use some underglazes from uh, Speedball. And I'm going to show you, I have this color palette that I purchased at Amazon and it keeps my underglazes moist for a really long time. And it also allows me to mix my own colors. And that's the, one of the great things about underglazes. Um, I, it also allows you to make a little bit at a time so you don't waste a lot of color, um, which is another good thing because underglazes can uh, get a little pricey. Um, and I'm gonna keep that covered for a little bit. And um, I suggest before you jump right in, which you can totally do if you want to, um, I would suggest to sketch out your design. Um, if you're not into sketching, you just wanna jump right in, you can also do that. I'm going to uh, make some paper strips so as I'm decorating, I can do some lines on my work, which is called paper resist, the technique. I'm going to create some lines. And what this does is that you can paint over it and then remove the paper, and then you'll have a great line. And you could also do that with a whole bunch of shapes. And this is a good way to decorate your plate if you're not big on drawing, but you still want some type of surface decoration. This will help you and you don't have to just do stripes. You can do hearts, squares, circles, a whole bunch of stuff. And I'll show you that in a little bit. I'm going to use my little tiny sponge that I cut off. Make sure it's moist, not dripping in water. 
I'm going to slightly damp the paper so it sticks to the plate. Perfect, great. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and if you don't have brushes at home, you can buy a fairly inexpensive set from Amazon. You could also get them at Blick. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if Blick is delivering at the moment. I would say just Amazon and any other box stores that are open, Target's open to. Um, okay, and I'm going to proceed to do some designs on it. So when you are applying underglaze, you want to make sure that you do either short brush strokes or you tap the paint. And what this does is that if you, if you push too much, if you brush too much without dipping it back into the underglaze, it's not, all you're going to do is move the paint around. Um, so you want to make sure that you keep it short, the brush stroke, and then you dip again fairly quickly. You want to make sure when you're underglazing, thicker is better. And if you can still see the gray of the clay body peeking through, that means it's too thin. And unless you're looking to apply a more of a watercolory look, you want to make sure that it's you do a thick paint. And these underglazes stay pretty close, true to color, um, which is a really nice, another really nice thing. Good. So underglazes are washable. They don't. They're not permanent, like other paints, like acrylics or. Um, or oils, it's only permanent until it's when it's fired. The trick is with the paper resist is to remember that you put them there. When you're done, take them out. I had a class that used paper resist for their designs and forgot to remove the plate. And then we went ahead and fire it, didn't realize it, we cleared glazed it, and the paper resist and the clear glazed reacted and the plate, all of the work of that class was ruined that session. So for that, um, that particular project, we had to do it again. Um, so that's a good, that's always really good to always remember. Don't get distracted and forget to take them off before you fire it. I use a lot of underglaze. I like my colors to be very deep. I just like to make them thick enough that you can see the brush strokes and you can feel, once it's fired, the paint through the clear glaze that I will be applying after I'm done. I even go after I fire it, then I'll do a couple more, two to three more coats of underglaze to make, to um, add more coats and to make it even more textural so you can really feel the brush strokes of the underglaze, sort of as if it was like an oil painting. Okay, so I've been adding more coats of paint and I've been developing my surface. Um, some of my paper resist is starting to separate. So you, I don't know if you can see, there you go. So it might get, I might get some bleed in, might bleed through. So I'll have to wipe that off with a moist sponge, but underglaze is not permanent until it's fired in the kiln, so it's pretty easy to wipe it off. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. If you don't have the patience to let this dry, you can always use a little trick. Uh, a hair dryer. So I still have some wet spots, but it's worked really well. So I'm going to go ahead and add one more coat of paint of underglaze. So a color that I mixed. Which orange, red, white, and a tad of yellow. Make this really nice, lovely color. And I'm going to make some strawberries. going to go ahead and with the pointy part of my skewer you can also use a needle if you want an even thinner or a toothpick um, 
to do this. And I'm gonna go and just scratch the surface of my strawberries. Just remember to remove these little pieces of paint. This is why you want the paint to be completely dry so you can brush it off later. I'm going to take my paper resist off. See how it creates really nice straight lines? And I can see how it, where it bled out a little bit. So Go in with a moist sponge. I'm going to show you where it bled out and went into my line. We're going to go in and we're going to slowly just wipe it off. And what I'm going to do after this is bisque is that I'm going to paint the whole thing black and then I'm going to wipe it all out and then the black is going to inlay inside all of the lines, all of the scratched areas. And it's going to look really cool. These guys, which I recommend, it sometimes is better to let the paint completely dry before you take them off. And if you wait for the plate to get completely bone dry, which you'll have to because you're going to wait to fire these at the clay studio once we open again, you can go ahead and scrape with your plastic rip all of the little paint, a little squigglies of, of, um, of the scratched clay. It'll be a lot easier if you wait, so you can just... So while this dries, I'm going to go ahead and decorate the tray. And for this I'm going to do something a lot simpler. Just going to add some underglaze. Watermelons over here. Over there, over here. And bear with me first. It's a little rough right now, but as you go, you can clean it up a little bit more. Right now, I just want to put the shapes in. It's already sort of starting to look like watermelon. So I, ha I painted up most of my seeds. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to some of these that were too wet before. And I'm going to add a little bit more underglaze to the watermelon part. And I'm going to add a little bit more dimension to my watermelons by adding some lights and darks. So I'm gonna... Okay, and I'm gonna add some pink. And four, now I'm going to scratch my surface and I'm going to use a needle that I used to do back in my embroidery days in grad school. I, um, I'm going to use it to make an even thinner line because the skewer line might be too thick for the seeds. And like I said, when you are drying on the clay, make sure you don't go too deep with your lines. So you don't end up cutting your clay going through. Oops. There we go. Always wipe off the residual pieces of 
paint under glaze that you're taking off. And then I'm going to go in with my skewer and I'm going to scratch the lines. And I think I'm going to go back in on my big seeds and re-scratch. I think the, the needle line might be too thin for this. I think it's great for the watermelon seeds that are in the watermelon. But here I think these are going to look better. So once this, is com once this is completely bone dry, I'm going to scrape off all the little pieces of clay and then this will be ready to fire in the kiln. Um, thank, you for, thank you so much for uh, sitting through another demonstration and um, I hope to see you all back at the clay studio.